Hi, I'm Jennifer with Grateful Mom, and I made this video because when I started to make the decision that I might want to homeschool my girls in just when they were starting in high school, um, I was watching a lot of YouTube videos on homeschooling from large and small families, and um, I love watching those, those family videos, but I didn't see a whole lot out there about starting in high school. So I just thought I would make this video to kind of show you what my experience was and the curriculum I ended up choosing and why and um, how it's going and that kind of thing. I might do a separate video on why I chose to homeschool um, starting in high school because there were several factors involved. Um, I will say that I am a Christian, so this is coming from a Christian perspective, but my decision to homeschool regardless of um, of what my beliefs are, uh, would have still been to homeschool, um, given our situation. So um, anyway, so when I started looking out at what kind of curriculums there were, I was overwhelmed. And I found uh, a woman by the name of Kathy Duffy, who writes reviews on all of the, the um, literature, homeschool literature out there. And that was very helpful. I didn't get her book. I just used her free resources on her website. Um, but that was very helpful, and as was listening to other YouTubers who have been doing things for a long time, people who have used certain curriculums and stayed with it or changed. So um, I went to the different companies. Um, I looked at Sunlight, I looked at My Father's World, I looked at um, Simply Charlotte Mason, um, and uh, Good and Beautiful, and there were some others that I looked at, and I just really looked at primarily the English and history um, portions of those because I knew that that's and Bible because that's what I was going to be teaching from um, on my own and then I knew I also knew starting out that if we were going to do this I not the strongest person in math or high school science and so I wanted to see what we could do um, if there was something I could find that was in class I I'm a certified elementary school teacher and I taught through the pandemic um, and, and afterwards and I, I as most of us probably did, got really kind of burnt out on the online thing. Um, online has its place for sure and um, it's convenient and a lot of people like it. A lot of people homeschool with it. But my choice was that um, I really felt like I wanted to be very involved in the portions of homeschooling that I'm teaching. And, um, and then that I could have them, have my kids go somewhere physical where, um, or at least, you know, I don't know. I just thought, I just wanted to try to find that, which I did. So there are several areas, um, several locations around us that offer homeschool classes. They're taught by um, people who have been certified as teachers in the past. They are homeschool moms, um, either past homeschool moms or current homeschool moms or dads. Um, so going into it, I felt confident, and I had asked some friends at our church, um, where you know where several of our families homeschool, and they are in the high school levels as well. Um, just some recommendations of places around here. So I picked two places just based on the availability of classes in our schedule for um, science and math. So to just as a little background, my girls, um, when I was teaching, my girls went through my elementary school, K through five, which is a public school. And then sixth through ninth, my, uh, my now 10th grader went to private Christian middle school. And then when my now ninth grader was going into sixth grade, we did the same thing. So we put her in sixth through eighth grade. Um, so I started looking at this last, last spring and the school they went to taught a year ahead so my girls came out of there um, with a biology credit, a foreign language credit, and an algebra one credit for high school coming, coming out of eighth grade. So um, for science, I thought I would just start them in chemistry, um, ninth and 10th grade with chemistry. So that was one, one place, one class that I chose to do in a physical location. And um, what happened was, what I learned was that high, uh, homeschoolers who've been homeschooled their whole career, they have a very different skill set. They're very typically self-motivated. Um, they're on an accelerated pace. They're usually ahead or well ahead of their same age peers. 
and um, they just have you know developed study habits because they've they've got the home structure rather than the school structure. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of expectations and things that my kids and I both had to learn. And then also as I was as we went into this school year this past year in the fall, um, I was my eyes were were opened wide. So after about eight weeks of both of them coming home in tears, um, most weeks that so they went to this class one day a week, so it was three hours, and then they would have to do assignments um, during during the week. Um, they were the the teacher was excellent, but the pace was so fast, and with me not being a strong chemistry person, <laughs> um, I just you know we got plen we got help from her, but it was just like you have to keep moving, you know, when you're in school. And they were in class also with kids who were juniors and seniors, uh, most of them. Some of them were, were sophomores. Um, but overall, it was just, I didn't want my girls to be, I know that feeling of just being so drowning, feeling like you're drowning. And then it just, every week you have to go back and do it again and do it again. And with this being our first year homeschooling, I really, especially since they were kind of hesitant about wanting to do it in the first place, um, I really just didn't want their spirits crushed. And because they were a little bit of ahead with their credits, I felt like we had a little bit of breathing room to, to get our science done. So what I decided to do was take the, um, the chemistry class that they were using, the teacher was using. So this is Dr. J. Wiles, Marion Builders, um, discovering design in chemistry. And he offers his class online, which I know I said we were trying not to do online, but um, in this case, we were about eight or nine weeks in, and um, I went ahead and purchased his class, so it, each all of his videos are, are videotaped. And then I had, in his book, in the back, there are the daily assignments. So it's very, it's very nicely marked out <clears throat> how, what you need to get done. I ordered the lab kit that comes with it for the girls, and um, I took the syllabus in, in um, together with the assignments in here that the kids were using in class. The teacher, the physical class teacher, she also had this um, Intro to Chemistry Coloring Workbook by Sonia Wrights, and I kept that and just used her syllabus to see, comparing it with Dr. Wells assignment list to see where she inserted those workbook assignments and so we just kept doing that and then I purchased also the answer key and tests um, on on the site the Bering Builders site and that allows me to um, it, it has in here an answer key it has extra questions practice questions which is nice um, and then there you know are the, the tests in there so so far Bringing it home was a good choice. Um, you know, it's each video is probably 50 minutes to an hour long, and the girls do it together, which is nice. So I think we're gonna we're much better off this way with this particular course. Um, so that's chemistry. Foreign language, I found a different location um, that was offering Spanish two and American Sign Language two, which are the two that my girls needed. Um, my 10th grader is taking ASL 2. She took ASL 1 last year at the private school, but that teacher was online anyway. So the kids sat in class and she was online and she liked that. So she asked me if she could take that online and I said yes. And she loves it and is doing very well in it. Um, Spanish 2 is physical for my 9th grader and so uh, we go there and she loves that. Math, my 9th grader is in geometry. Um, at the same place where we were doing chemistry, and I love her teacher. Uh, she um, goes once a week for, th it's three hours, and then again, you know, just has the assignments, and then um, homework, <clears throat> excuse me, homework all week, that just like daily assignments. Um, for my 10th grader, be again, because we had some breathing room with the math credit, she struggles with algebra, struggles with math, and it has a lot of anxiety about it. And so I, I looked so hard to find something, a math course that was kind of designed for kids like that, who have a lot of anxiety and who, who struggle to kind of remember concepts and things. So I did find this um, Dr. Dell 
uh, his name is Dr. Craig Kane, um, and he, he has developed his own program called Dr. Dell's Map, and there are, I ordered the three workbooks in the system, and this is, this was a good idea. I'm glad we did it. It's a review of Algebra 1, Geometry, and even gets into Trigonometry skills using a calculator, the kind that's allowed on the SAT. So um, this was a good good thing for her, and the, the lessons are short. You watch a lesson, it's on a video. You watch a lesson that's maybe 15 minutes long, um, and then you do the practice problems. And so then you have another page where you try to do the problems without you know help. And it's just, it, it was very good. She loved the, the self-paced side of it and um, and is doing well with it. So I, um, I can't recommend that enough. And then next year, the two of them will both go into Algebra 2. Okay, so for what I am teaching or supervising is um, social studies. So this year, last year my 10th grader had world history um, next year she'll have uh, United States history and then she'll do government and economics in 12th grade. So this year was a good year to do have them both together in world geography, which is usually considered um, an optional a credit for social studies in high school. And I really want the girls to understand world geography and issues pertaining to international, you know, international issues. So, it, um, so we chose this. This, I, I again looked at different programs. Um, all of them looked good, but with history, I remember in all of my history classes getting a massive textbook and only ever reading, you know, certain pages in each chapter, and you probably didn't even get through half of it. So the way Knotgrass is written is outstanding. The chapters are very manageable. Um, it, there are many good supporting graphics, photographs, um, historical document pictures, and it's just been really great. The girls love it, I love it, and I, I mean, I really can't say enough about the Knotgrass program. So this is Ray Knotgrass, this is book two. There are two books in the, in the set, and um, you can see some of the, um, you know, the photographs, the way it, the text, the text is written. Um, at the end of, at the, at the beginning of each unit, so if I open this up to say uh, unit 18, okay, unit 18 is on East Asia, and um, in the beginning of the unit, it tells you what your, oh, the, so the thing about Knotgrass 2 is you can use it for a history or social studies credit, English credit, and a worldview credit. Um, I'm only using it for world geography, but I am using the literature supplements and the lessons um, to satisfy, well, I shouldn't say I'm only using it, I mean, I'm using this and another program to satisfy the English requirement. So um, it's, it's really good. So then we have, um, it tells you the books that you use in this unit, the, a project, most of the units have a project that the, the kids can pick to do and then it tells you when they assign you a new book of literature what that literature is about and then usually you have a couple of units to to read the book so each unit is five chapters and they're really doable I mean they're just they're they're very well written um, that's one chapter right there the assignment for that particular chapter is in the back uh, at the end and so there's um, a worldview question always something about you know work on your project read certain parts of the literature um and then sometimes there's a gazetteer assignment and this gazetteer comes with the program and again beautiful beautifully beautifully written produced the maps are gorgeous um they're just this one is basically maps of different parts of the world and their flag and, f and country facts and um so there's, in some of the units there are, or some of the lessons, there's a gazetteer um, country that you are going to read about. And then at the end, there are student review questions. These are optional if you purchase the course, but I'll show you. I went ahead and did it because I wanted to take grades. And um, so this is the student review book, and each review book has lesson, 10 lessons, 10 questions for each lesson. And then when you get um, 
when you complete, so we do a lesson a day. So we finish one unit a week, usually, unless we're behind on something. Um, also in here is some lit literary analysis about the different pieces of literature that you're gonna read. Um, this one was for Know Why You Believe in this excellent book. We also read Know What You Believe uh, for a different course. Um, there are map skills assignments in here. Um, you have, you know, whether you are examining a map and answering questions or whether you're creating your own map. Um, there, and then every five units, at the end of the fifth unit, you get, you have a um, test. So you have quizzes on, on each unit, and then after five units, you have a test, and you have a world geography test, a world view test, and an English test exam. Um, you know, so, and this is a separate quiz and exam book, too. And then also, what I got with it was the guide for parents and the answer keys, so I can grade all of the quizzes and exams. Um, and then the writing is more subjective grading, but they have to write papers. There's a, there's a research paper that they have to write. Um, there are different projects along the way. Now, I have cut back on some of the projects for world history. I kind of just look at every week and, and balance it with what we're doing in English. So I'll talk about that in a second. So I kind of, um, I don't have them do every single project or every single writing assignment because in their other English program, they are doing quite a bit of writing. So for, let me get to, to English now. So for English, I did go with the good and the beautiful. Um, their high school, they have high school one, two, three, and four. And each of the high school levels, so for example, high school one has 10 booklets. And this is high school one, unit two, just as an example. These are so beautiful and well-written and um, I can't say enough about the skills that the girls ha are reviewing. Some of it is review, and then some of it they, they've just forgotten, and then some of it they're learning. So um, we have, I'll just kind of walk you through real quick. There's sentence dictation, um, where you just work on spelling. And then throughout these are beautiful just works of art that, that they have. They read about an artist or a poet, or it just depends on the unit. But I really just want to... Sometimes just I feel like taking these out and putting them on my wall because they're just beautiful to look at. Um, this particular one is on Arthur Durand. I mean, did I say that right? It is, um, I'm sorry, not Arthur, Asher. Asher Brown Durand. And so uh, also they have memory, uh, memorization where they have to memorize poems, Greek and Latin roots, um, and then some portions of geography, which fits nicely with our geography, I think. Um, I thought I had a card. Yes. So some of these cards, these cards are nice. You'll, it tells you every booklet. When you start a booklet, you kind of set yourself up. You get your booklet. We go through, just because my kids, I, I learned after a couple booklets that they were not reading closely to some of the directions. So um, they would either answer things incorrectly or they would just um you know it was based on whatever they however they had understood it so we're working on that as a skill reading closely so what i had them start doing is we go together and we highlight before we start a new book we highlight every bit of direction that there is so that and then i tell them read it and reread it and make sure before you start answering that you're doing what they ask for sometimes that word not throws you off you know which one of these is not included or um you know just details like that that they need to pay attention to so these are some cards this for example um is the continents and the answers are on the back and then this is a poetry card uh, for poetry memorization i'm not real you know i don't press them too much to have these memorized in the time frame um, that they're supposed to do it and we might skip at one unit because they're memorizing a lot of other things um in various things going on in our church or, you know, just it's, it's a lot. So, um, I try to pick and choose the things that I really think are, are super important that I want them to carry on. And memorization is important and reading poetry is absolutely important and being able to understand it. But this is just for memory. And then in the back, they take out some words so that you can practice and just use it as a help. Um, and then Greek and Latin roots, as I mentioned, is in here as well. So, um, so back to the booklet. 
Um, there's usually, uh, this is information about the Hudson River. Um, just, just gorgeous. And then usually there's a tracing activity. I think one of them, they had to trace the United States and label major rivers. Um, this one was New York City tracing assignment and labeling the boroughs. Um, and then this, this particular unit, they had to do a, a Hudson River Valley School PowerPoint presentation. So I had the girls work on it together and then they presented the, the did they did their own PowerPoint research and they presented it to me and a couple of other people um, for that. And then there's always vocabulary. They're learning new vocabulary, annotating and summarizing. Uh, sometimes there are reading assignments uh, of book novels outside of, of the booklet. Um, effective writing passage, so rewriting statements using different kinds of uh, beginnings of sentences so that you're not writing the same form all the time. Grammar usage and punctuation, um, dependent and independent clauses. Sometimes there's a drawing. It's kind of nice for a little brain break. They have a picture and you just, um, you draw the picture and it's it's a nice, a nice um, way to do a little bit of art and take a brain break. So this is, and then usage, like all together and all together, who, who, and who, and who's, and whom, and um, there, there, and there, that kind of practice. There's always an insights journal, so they give you three or four writing options, and then you respond to a prompt, and it's just 250 to 300 word little essay. Um, again, this is, this is spelling, base words, um, more vocabulary matching and just as a review. They usually review what you've done in the booklet before, so there's a nice spiral um, with that. Sentence diagramming, I had forgotten how to diagram sentences, and um, but it's so helpful. So we went through, there are very, there are a lot of helpful videos on the Good and the Beautiful's website to show you how they just walk you right through it and you can watch it as many times as you need to understand it and the girls are really getting it down. Um, and then there's optional art projects, which I don't make optional, I make them, <laughs> I require them just, the girls like art and this again gives them a nice break after hard work. Um, and so there was this tree and sometimes it's drawing, sometimes it's painting. So uh, this is the sketch that my daughter did, and then this is the other sketch that she did. And um, yeah, I think I, I think I had the other one. And in another unit, there was a tree that they painted. So this is the tree that ended up painting. It's really, really nice. And then at the end of the, when they're done with the booklet, there's a unit check. And it's just so that you can take a grade if you want. There's a unit test. And for this unit, we read a book called Just David. And um, so there were a couple of essay questions in the back about, about that novel, and we did read that together. So The Good and the Beautiful, ELA, highly recommend it. Oh, to make this an honors course as well, they do have these book studies. And there's, I did, I got all three of the books. I'm not necessarily going to do them all this year because we have a lot of reading and through the geography, which is like 10 or 11 novels. And then Good and the Beautiful has another, I think, um, not at least several novels for each program. And I, I did English 1 and 2 this year. I was trying to push them through sort of more quickly. Um, we probably won't get all the way through level 2, but we're into it. So um, they're, they're doing very well. Um, but then, like I said, English 1 is just 10 booklets. That counts as your English credit. But we're trying to do a little bit more. Um, Pride and Prejudice is one honors book study, and we're going to do this together. It's um, just so you can see about how long it is. The other one is C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters, and then Little Men. Um, okay, so that is that. Then when I oh this by the way, so with read alouds, I'm going to get to the morning. Let me talk about what we do in the morning. So when I started thinking about this. I, I, so I got science, math, and foreign language down. I got history or social studies down and, um, and Bible and ELA. So then the question was, um, what do we do with our morning meeting? I love having a morning meeting. I love all the videos of the families that sit together and get into God's word in the morning. And so I purchased 
this book called Enrichment Studies with Simply Charlotte Mason. <laughs> Back then I was just all over the place. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I needed some kind of lesson plan. And this is a great, it's a great book to use if you want your lessons just planned out for you. It's really good. Um, they have the routine every day is a little bit different um, depending on whether you're working on a character habit, doing a music study, an art study, a nature study. Um, but every day pretty much is scripture memory and um, a read aloud. And then sometimes they have foreign language. So I started off using this and then I realized I just needed to do my own thing, but I was great, grateful for this structure um, because I did end up getting her, her character building program, which is called Laying Down the Rails, um, a, a, Char a Charlotte Mason Habits Handbook by Sonia Schaefer. And this is the handbook, and then these are the two lesson books that come with it. So these actually have the lessons that you do with your kids. Um, it's very good if you read them, read ahead and plan for these. Um, but they are geared for K through 12, so all ages can do it. Um, Charlotte Mason, in her teachings, recommended going in a certain order in the beginning, which I agree with. But I also, she's, they said basically if you do all of the habits, you'll be done in 10 years if you spend like six weeks on each habit. Well, I don't have that long with my girls. And so um, I have been picking out the ones that I feel we really need to focus on, which are things like obedience and truthfulness and attention, um, modesty and purity, cleanliness. So things that, that I feel we need to do. And we're also in the Charlotte Mesa program. They typically don't do it uh, every day or every other day. I. I've been trying to accelerate things, so we usually do something every uh, one of the lessons every other day or every third day. Um, that's been going well, and then we always do a Bible study. Um, Bible in the worldview in Not Grass History, they have a worldview, they have memory verses, they have um, you know that can count as your Bible, um, but. I just felt like, you know, I wanted to go through certain content specific Bible studies with my girls with as teenagers, as things they've been going through, you know, even at church, even as homeschoolers, there's drama. And so, um, and they certainly experienced that all through public and, and private school. I mean, that's just life. So, um, not this company called Not Consumed, she has some really great Bible studies. One of them was on navigating friendships that we did. Um, I've read that some or seen that some people with teenagers have them do sort of an independent study and then they come back to the table and they discuss and that's fine too but my girls and I are really just for the first time even though we've been going to church um, we're just learning how to really read the Bible for the first time I, we, we're, we've been blessed with such an outstanding church and um, and so I feel like I'm relearning things and delving deeper than I've ever gone and uh, so I really wanted to do these with my girls and plus it's nice to just have the reinforcement of yeah <laughs> How to navigate friendships and how to get along when, when people can't get along and how you're supposed to treat that as a Christian and things like that Another one. This is an area where I personally struggle. My girls struggle sometimes too as teenagers fruit of the tongue You know, how do you talk to people? How do you talk to people when you're under duress? Um and so those have been, we're still actually in Fruit of the Tongue. I did take a break because our church was doing a Bible Bowl competition. And so they had to do a lot of memory, like really studying the whole book of Romans and memorizing a lot of verses from there. So um, we kind of took a little bit of a break, but that's passed now. So we're going to get back into the finish our Fruit of the Tongue. And then I've got some other ones that I, that I ordered um, from Not Consumed website. So I recommend those for sure. Um, Okay, so, so in the morning, oh, the first thing we do in our morning meeting is we watch uh, a current events program called World Watch. Again, highly recommend. It's current events. Um, it's, they're, they're a faith-based company. Um, they show current events. You know, it's a, it's a real, like, particularly um, lately, it seems like there's a lot of war. But the way they handle it, it's not, like, hitting you over the head. Each segment is, like, 10 minutes long. And it's chopped up into different pieces. And, and it's not all news. Sometimes it's a little bit about history. Sometimes it's a little bit about 
um, etymology, like the history of words and how people, just fun facts about people in the world who are doing interesting things. So um, it's just very interesting. And it's, uh, I mean, we just always look forward to looking at it, watching it in the morning. So that's how we kick off our morning time is we watch World Watch and then we do our Bible study and then we do um, a habits. Most of the days we do a habit lesson and then we have a read aloud. And um, sometimes I'll read, sometimes we'll just, you know, read around the table, we'll pass the book around, but I always try to get a chapter in. Now, some of the books that we read this year are below grade level, but I found them on as extra books. Um, these are good and the beautiful, but I found some on other sites as well that I purchased. Um, this one is the gold to bloom, three gold to blooms, to blooms. Um, it's written on a seventh grade level. That was a very, very interesting, uh, interesting one about an apprenticeship, somebody who apprenticed, um, and, uh, in Williamsburg. Boy of the Pyramids, it's written on a sixth grade level, but it's a very interesting story about Egypt and a little boy in Egypt. Um, this one is called The Saracen Steed. It's written on an eighth grade level. It's written about a true events from the Crusades, the time of the Crusades and, and thereabouts. And, um, it, it's, it was just, um, all of them were very good. Now what I, oh, and then the last one, the most recent one that we read is called Through the Wall. It's written on a ninth grade level. Um, it's about a boy who, uh, got through the Berlin Wall and, um, escaped and, and his story. Excellent, excellent story. Um, even with these lower level books, there's some vocabulary that my girls didn't know. And even though they went to a private school, um, some of their, some of the literature that they were reading was, was um, challenging. Like they did a, some Shakespeare, they read George Orwell's 1984, um, but there weren't a lot of books that were assigned, which kind of surprised me. Um, so, uh, and then, so I just knew I wanted to, uh, in, in this day and, day and age of, you know, everybody wanting to be on the computer all the time, um, a lot of kids just don't read books anymore. And that's very important to me because I love to read and it's important to build your vocabulary. It's important to build your uh, attention span and, and strengthen your attention, your ability to pay attention and find details and critically think. So, um, so I'm, that's why I'm like piling on the books this year. And some of them are, they have to read independently, but some of them we do through the read aloud. So these were extras and very good for building vocabulary. Um, and then the, one of the ones actually that I, I have out here, it's called Blood Brothers. This is from the World Not Grass Histories, World Geography. And with all the things going on in the Middle East, it was such a timely book and so well written. Um, I highly recommend this book. But this one was a challenging one. It's, although it's a narrative, um, in narrative form, it's, um, it's just, it's a true story. And, uh, and it, it deals with some pretty heavy stuff. Um, and, and, but it helped all of us understand in more detail the complexity of the Israel, the is issues with Palestinians and Jewish people. It's, it, it um, just really opened my eyes. It clarified some things. It made me look and research more. And, um, and that's very relevant right now. So, um, so that's a great, a great program. Um, includes fantastic literature. One last thing that I just ended up deciding to do is I decided to um, get a home economics course. I, I'm kind of teaching my kids sort of home ec, not officially, and um, I don't, they're probably not going to need a, a home ec credit in high school, but although I can give them if I start, if I take grades on these. But I found this on Christian Light. Dot com. It is a Mennonite um, organization, and so in the pictures in the front, you can see the ladies in Mennonite um, wearing Mennonite clothing. But I did look at samples on their on their website, and it's exactly what I want to teach my kids. I mean, they've cooked in the kitchen with me forever, um, and their dad. Um, so, but what, even when you go through here, it's like, oh well, you know, I don't know that I've ever taught them what braising something means or um, blanching things or you know just kitchen safety is always of course a priority but um sometimes when you hear it from somebody else it makes a difference so this covers a lot of things their home economics one course um you know basic sewing and um, keeping a godly home and 
um, just all, all kinds of just home economics and it's really good. So I thought I would do, do this, you know, sort of lightly. And if we take into next year to, to get this done, that's fine. They also have a home economics two class. Um, so I think, so that's it. So basically how is it going? Um, the girls love being homeschooled now, which is a change from last year when they're kind of grumbling about it. Um, we've had a lot of personal things going on. So the flexibility of time in homeschooling has been a blessing to me um, because I've had to be various places and, um, and, and it's just been nice that we can homeschool at night if we need to, or if we need to catch up on Saturdays, we do that. Um, it's not typical, but you know, we like to get up early in the morning and get stuff done. Um, so, but they're, they're really liking it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention too, that we do in the morning in our morning meeting is this is also from simply Charlotte Mason is picture studies. And there's a great, um, they have all kinds of, of artists. This one that was Monet that we, I have up on the wall. I put these up on the wall and we do about one of these every couple of weeks. Um, we, there's a book about each each painter, and I think they give you, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve different um, painting. Oh, I pulled out the wrong one. Actually, this is Cassatt, who I have on the wall right now is Monet because we're not done with Monet. But so they give you, um, I guess now, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight in here. And they give you a booklet showing you how to do a book study, a picture study. They just walk you through, you know, why do we do a picture study? How do you do it? Um, and it takes, it takes you through the steps of, of doing a picture study. It really is only about 15 minutes long, maybe 10 minutes. Um, it gives you the story of the artist. And then in the back, it shows you all the paintings that they've included in the packet and um, some facts about about the painting, some interesting things. So what I do with my girls is we study it and then I put it up on the wall and then I use that booklet to write maybe three or four facts about the painting and then um, every few days I'll say, okay girls, before we come to have our morning meeting, go and go look at the Monet paintings and pick one and come back and tell me something about it. Tell me, tell me a fact or two about it. And it's amazing what how much has stuck and then, you know, when they start seeing Impressionist paintings out there or Monet discussions, they're like, oh, I've seen that. Oh, I know about Monet. And so, and actually our museum, our local museum, was having an Impressionist exhibit and some of Monet's paintings were on display. And so that was kind of neat that they could go and say, wow, I know something about that. So that's good. I also want to do music study. They're Simply Charlotte Mason and others have um, composer studies. I just haven't had time to get into that yet, and um, it's something that I really want to do. Another thing I have purchased that we're just starting late in the game is on Simply Charlotte Mason, I got uh, paid for some videos to do um, what she calls handicrafts. And I know I'm doing home economics, but this is a, uh, right now we're doing like sewing in, in the handicrafts and basic stitches, learning certain stitches, which is something I want my girls to know. Um, you know, how to hem things or how to make a blanket, you know, something like that. So we're doing that. And then nature study is another thing that I have not done as much as I want to, but we do have notebooks and art supplies. And once in a while we will get down to the park. And what we do is just notice uh, what's the weather like, what time of year is it, you know, what's the date, um, what do you see, draw a picture of something, write down a question of something that you wonder. Um, you know, again, with with everybody being on computers all the time, um, I have seen in my own kids the the um, the lack. I don't want to say the lack, but they just don't notice the natural world around them. You know, and of course, those teenagers are like, "Yeah, it's a tree, big deal." <laughs> That's not what, really what they say. But I mean, we are we are outdoors people. We go camping a lot, and they love the outdoors. But um, but you know, if you, unless you take your kids and say, look at the veins in this leaf, what colors do you see in this leaf? How does the leaf, you know, how does the, how does the plant survive? You know, how, and you could talk about photosynthesis or, uh, or, you know, if it's, if it's the winter time, you know, you have them take pictures. One of my kids loves to take photographs, take a picture of the, 
each little branch can, you know, or when you take a picture of a, of a tree in winter that's lost its leaves and you have a beautiful sunset behind it or a clear blue sky behind it, take a picture and notice that you can see all the details in the branches and just noticing detail. Um, is, is what, you know, I think Charlotte Mason is, was big on that and um, getting outside and being in nature and learning from nature is so important. So I'm trying to be more intentional about that um, and I hope to improve on that as, as we go along. So I hope that helps um, you for in, in, um, if you're thinking about homeschooling in high school. My girls also do uh, extracurricular activities. They do volleyball. There's a homeschool volleyball league. There's a homeschool track team, which we didn't have, we couldn't make practices this spring, but there is that. Um, you know, they do like just working out on their own, but as far as social things, um, I haven't gotten them into music lessons this year. They both know how to, they play the flute and the clarinet. Um, which they, they played in band. That's something that I'm kind of bummed about, that I, I would really like to find a local group that plays, um, and they could be in the band. But um, I definitely want them to take another um, instrument less, more instrument lessons, and both of them is, have shown interest in the guitar, so I might do that. One of these homeschool places has guitar and piano and voice, so um, we might get into that, but it's just, um, you know, it's just a lot. So um, anyway, I hope that, that helps you if you're deciding to homeschool again my kids were not totally thrilled about it and now they love it they're so happy to do it and um i think having having a network through church and the different activities that we did um that we do you know enables them to to make friends and they keep in touch with their old friends as well from school so we once in a while we'll get together with those friends as well um and I'm really happy with our curriculum. I don't see changing anything um, for next year because we're just we're just loving it. So I hope that helps and um, have a great day and I'll see you soon.